Hi, welcome to this new part, part 20 of this playlist. We are looking at AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification Real Questions. Real Questions. In this part, we will look at questions linked with these topics. Please remember, in this playlist, there are hundreds of questions. Please refer the previous parts for previous questions. All of those questions are still relevant. Please, please hit the subscribe and the like button. It keeps me motivated to put on some more contents which will help you from a cloud certification standpoint. If you have already cleared this certification, please jump into the AWS Solution Architect Associate certification. There are two playlists. Please go through all those playlists. There are hundreds of questions and explanations. All are still relevant. Let's look at this question. What is the name given to several separate sites in an AWS region? You know that in AWS region, there are availability zones okay, that are linked together with low latency networks. So always remember we should there are regions inside regions there are AZs and local zones and basically in, inside AZs there are data centers. So this is a list of region. These are the regions which are there. Okay. And these are the AZs. There are different sort of AZs which are available and there are also local zones which are available which are extensions of AWS region. Hence here our answer would be availability zones what are edge locations so d is our answer but let's look at other options edge locations what are edge locations see edge locations is designed to so that you can uh, get the uh, softwares and data delivered it delivers services with lowest latency as possible so these are some of the benefits of edge locations some edge location services return fast response directly to the user other edge location services route traffic into aws network so what happens is instead of using internet using internet for communication of your data it uses the aws internal network which is lot 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 more faster and remember that there are many edge locations compared to regions there are more regions no there are more edge locations than regions so c is wrong here because because aws region is not comprised of uh, edge locations it is comprised of availability zones separate sites are there now let us look at b which is vpcs See, VPC just means virtual private cloud in the AWS sub. It is used to launch AWS resources in your virtual network. Okay. It is, uh, it is not a component of a region. It is a component of probably an availability zone. So B is wrong and direct connect A. It is you. If you want to connect your on-premises to AWS and you want a dedicated network connection between your on-premises and your AWS, if you have a hybrid structure hybrid model of cloud then you use this this is not inside a part of a region it is probably a part of a availability zone this is my final answer now let's jump into this question see there is an application and it needs intermittent spiky and unexpected workloads so you see unexpected means you cannot plan unexpected means you cannot plan unexpected means you cannot plan if you cannot plan then how will you use dedicated host and reserve instances only if you can plan you can use reserve instances only if you can plan then only you can use dedicated host so these two are out of question in order to use b and d to need expected predictable workloads now with spot instances the problem is this spot instance may die away man this is a temporary kind of stuff the moment it's less like ebay the moment someone bids higher than you you will lose your spot instance if you are losing your spot instance how will you handle spiky and unexpected workloads suppose an unexpected workload comes and that is the time when you lose your instance if you are on a spot instance what happens everything stalls you have to wait for a new instance to be acquired and that's why in this case c is the best option on demand on demand will work the best because a anytime the instance can be taken out of your disposal so this will not work b and d you need predictable workloads not unexpected spiky workloads let us look at this question we need two answers not one answer see there is a big volume of online video content netflix you have big contents here so online content delivery online content delivery online content delivery 
in AWS world, in the AWS world, where will you keep? You will keep the videos on S3. You will use CloudFront for content distribution and caching so that when you watch Netflix, when you watch Netflix, you are a supreme customer because you are so attention. Uh, I mean, you have such a low attention span that if there is a buffer happening, you will immediately go to another OTT platform. So all OTT platforms know that I am currently trying to address adults whose attention span is like a kid. Okay. If that is the case, I cannot afford a buffer time. If that is the case, I have to use cash so that you as a user never see any buffering and you will not switch because your attention span is like a kid, like a kid who never is able to focus. If that is the case, then we use S3 and CloudFront. Okay. We keep all the video files. For example, if we were designing Netflix in AWS, we will keep all the video files on S3 buckets, different buckets. We will plug cloud front, which speeds up distribution of your static and dynamic contents. In this case, we have a static content. We have a static content. For example, it's the same video. It's the same movie, which is being streamed so i can cache it and you may be at a different stage of watching the video but the cache will take care of that that is how cloud front is useful okay and cloud front delivers your content through worldwide network of data centers called edge locations it does not use internet just because it is not using internet it is using its own edge locations it is fast 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 high performance how does it speeds up? How it is fast? It speeds up the distribution of your content by routing each user request through AWS backbone network to the edge location that can best serve your content. Whichever edge location has that content. For example, you are watching Family Man 2. Whichever edge location has that video files, it will route you there. See, OTT platforms uses such technology so that we can sit on our bumps never get up so that we do not do any exercise okay and keep watching and keep watching and spend our lives watching so let's talk about other options like glacier see glacier you already know glacier is an archival s3 storage class whenever you want to store some files from an archive standpoint for example medical records that patient was there and the medical records were active for two years after that from a compliance standpoint HIPAA compliance perspective you have to store that for seven years so you will store it in Glacier Glacier will not help you with delivering online video content so D is wrong then C for delivering online video contents do we save the video files on EFS no we save it on S3 S3 is the most cheapest one highly scalable and it is an object store I can store video files in any format I don't have to put it on EFS because it is not not fast not fast okay and storage gateway if you have something like a storage between on-prem and cloud then you use a storage gateway here there is nothing called on-prem here and hence these two are my final answers please hit the subscribe and the like button please this brings us to the end of this part in this part we covered questions linked with these three topics see you in the next part